I'm really excited about today. We have Zangati on the line, and they're going to show us their latest and greatest, and again, answer your questions and, and show you how to optimize and, and troubleshoot virtual infrastructure. So uh, with no further ado, let's get going. So before we do that, though, I do want to introduce my guest for today and the, pre the main presenter for today, uh, Don. So Don, can you introduce yourself uh, real quick, and then uh, then the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks. So uh, I've been in high tech forever, uh, you know, uh, five years with Intel, 10 with Hewlett Packard, seven with uh, Microsoft, uh, another five with EMC. So I've seen some different parts of technology, um, and these are all in the data center. So uh, the question becomes in that complex interdependent uh, uh, data center, and including client devices and the user experience that's going to happen. You know, if people need optics and visibility, that's where Zangati comes in, and so I'm, I'm happy to talk about the Zangati product suite today. And, and more than that, it's like, you know, I wouldn't even do a webinar uh, to just tell you about a product. That is not cool. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is to impart some actual knowledge that will help you do your jobs better, um, you know, make better IT purchase decisions and so forth. And yes, I will definitely be using Zangati to emphasize my points. So I hope you get something general, you know, general good information out of this. Uh, that is my goal. Excellent. So let's, uh, let's do this, baby. Excellent. So why don't you kick off and give me a question to start me going? Perfect. I can do that. Um, whoa, I forgot one piece. Let me open up my questions piece. So uh, uh, guys out there, use the chat or the, yeah, the questions actually section of, of go to webinar and uh, it's on your right panel. So if you guys have any questions at all for Don as we go through this, please ask them within that section. I, I will field them and then uh, send them over to Don or ask Don. But I have my own questions also. So like I said, I also get to learn. So let, let me pull the first one. So me what metrics do I need to collect uh, beyond those that I'm already getting from my hypervisor? Oh, okay, great. Uh, and just one more thing on questions. We do have a lot of attendees this morning, so if we can't get to your question, uh, don't worry. We can get back to you afterwards and get, get that all answered. Okay, so let me get into my correct environment here. Okay, so I've prepared a, uh, I've prepared a graphic to get us started, and uh, it, you've got the Zangati dashboard sitting here, and some lines depicting the different uh, things within the data center. I just want to go through these so that you can understand what uh, data is being collected, how it's being collected, uh, at least from the Zangati standpoint. So I, uh, really, the first place to start is probably somewhere in the middle. You've got hypervisor hosts, right? You've probably got three or more of them. You've probably got a cluster. You might have a couple of clusters. You might have multiple sites. And the way we collect the information from the hypervisor hosts is we talk to their boss. Okay, so that's going to be vCenter, uh, who's in charge of all of the ESXi, uh, you know, uh, Flock, and then the Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager and System Center Operations Manager that's uh, responsible for the Hyper-V, Flock, uh, and uh, so that's, that's how we collect that information. So uh, pretty much everything you see in vCenter, we get wind of in Zangati, and we're a superset, as, as you're going to see in a minute. Uh, the next thing is uh, other IT servers that might be uh, performing a supporting role. Um, Zangati, we, we, we not only monitor virtual machines, but we also monitor physical machines. We have no issue with that. And uh, now, so whether that Windows machine is virtual or physical, we go in with WMI because, hey, that's how you go into Windows and find out what's going on with CPU, memory, memory swap, I.O., um, storage, metrics, everything. WMI is just a wonderful wealth of knowledge. Uh, but if your guest VM or physical server is running Linux, then we're going to go in with SSH, and we'll just collect the information that way. Uh, the next thing is um, uh, the, I'm going to skip over to the network switches that hold the entire uh, data center together. Now, this is actually where Zangati began. Um, this is a very important layer because uh, what, I, what I find myself saying a lot is that the, the network switches are really the circulatory system of the data center. And, you know, you can tell a lot from a blood test. Uh, not everything, but it's a darn good amount of uh, data that you can pull in. And so we talk to the switches, 
and uh, that would be using one of the you know NetFlow or one of the similar uh, protocols in the NetFlow family. And so we get we get the reports about all the traffic. Now these networks are in three places. They're in uh, it's it's the network from uh, the virtual machines out to the people that are using them. There's the network sort of among the servers. There's network down to the storage system, especially if you're using NFS or iSCSI, right? And any one of these networks can become the congestion point. And uh, you know when you're tracking down, when you're looking for trouble, you want to look at the network. It's a good thing to to know about. Um, if the storage is a NetApp storage system, we go deep and talk directly to the NetApp storage system about really a lot of things that, that don't concern the virtual infrastructure. Um, we get a lot of really good data from there, and I think I, I uh, might be covering that topic a little bit later uh, some more. Now, if you're doing more than just virtual machines, if you're doing virtual desktops or virtual applications, then we'll be talking using the APIs provided. We talk directly to those services to the Zen app service, to the, the Zen desktop service. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, is this one over far, way far on the right, which is the, uh, the NetScaler. This is, this is a nice little device in Citrix environments. People will put these in, and uh, it becomes the gateway to the data center. And the nice thing about a NetScaler is it can stand in for the client devices without me needing to put an agent on the client devices. In fact, for all of the things that Zengadi monitors, there's no agents needed. And the, b being no agents needed, it, of course, you don't need to install them. You don't need to. Uh, you don't need to keep them current. You don't need to reboot servers after agents have been installed, which IT always hates to reboot servers naturally. Um, so we do all this without agents. And so when we're talking to the ADC. We get really good round trip information about the client devices that are using our data center. Maybe that client device is a smartphone, maybe it's a tablet, maybe it's some sort of thin client or your standard run of the mill PC or Mac. Um, you know, we can get really good information about, okay, what were the delays from my data center, from my ADC, out to that client device and back again? And what were those delays from the ADC into my data center and back out again? So as soon as an issue comes up, I can divide the problem in half. Is it east or is it west? And so that's, that, that is the, uh, the long and short of uh, what we monitor um, uh, with Zangati. Very cool, very cool. Let's see, what else do I have here? Um, how do you know if my storage is keeping, uh, keeping up with my virtual machines? Mm-hmm, okay, that is a great question. So I'm gonna go over here, see what I can, find here. Um, right here you'll see, okay, so here, here's a different rendering. This is the actual product now. This isn't like, you know, an, a graphic of, what, of what's going on. This is the actual uh, one of our dashboards. This is uh, the overall scorecard for the environment. Um, you can see here the performance index, the availability, and the relative capacity, right? No big surprise. This is sort of like VCOPs, VROPs, you know, this is what you want to see. It's a heat map, really. It's a heat map. And uh, the numbers talk about the number of alarms that have been generated. Now, as you can see here, right about here, we've got a uh, we've got a data stores. We've actually got 22 data stores involved in our little demo environment that we have over here at Zangadi, um, and we've got storage servers down below. So we actually collect the information on data stores from the hypervisor. And then we collect the information on the storage system itself. It has to be a NetApp storage system. That's the one that we can drill down deep on uh, today. Uh, we're going to support more storage systems in the future, but that, that's kind of how it looks today. So let me show you that then, all right? So what's happening with your storage, uh, storage is, of course, one of the most sensitive parts of the virtual infrastructure. It's also in where I came from is storage. Um, and so I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, a little bit of dawn wisdom on this. So at the top, I've got these virtual machines, and they're running on hypervisors. And I want to talk about this thing called the I/O Blender because this is what does so many people in. And 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 I'm sure you've heard about this. The the I/O Blender effect says, you know, if all eight of these virtual machines were doing sequential accesses, which Rotating media loves sequential accesses. Big sequential read, big sequential write. Life is good because you got this disk going around and you can suck it all up or lay it all down. 
Um, uh, so large sequential accesses are great for rotating media. But if every one of these eight virtual machines was doing sequential types of accesses and yet you're running them on a hypervisor, to the storage system, there's nothing sequential going on. It's a sea of random 1K and 4K reads and writes. Maybe a lot of 8Ks in there as well. Depends on the operating systems that you're using. There. So with all of this, with all of this random I/O activity, what happens is the storage system oftentimes buckles under the load. It can't take it because it it can deliver plenty of throughput, but it cannot deliver the IOPS. And uh, in this highly random, you know, uh, small sequential reads and writes, you've got to have IOPS, and there's only one way to get them: flash. Flash is the most important thing in the storage industry. It's changing the face of the storage industry. I personally like hybrid storage systems. They give me the best of both worlds. Um, that allows me to uh, not only deliver the IOPS out of the flash, but I can also have cost-effective capacity um, on rotating media. Nice thing about rotating media, never wears out, right? Um, and so you're going to have these different caching algorithms. And I just did uh, an on-site inspection for a customer last week uh, where they were having all kinds of trouble with their storage system. And uh, it turned out that it, uh, they had flash in there. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You got flash and like, you're, still, you're still seeing these. You know what the problem was? The problem was it was running dual one gig into the storage system. You want to do that. If, the, if, it's, if it's hybrid, or if it's, uh, if it's a pure solid state storage system, do yourself a favor and run 10 gig to it. So you got 10 gig between your, your hypervisor hosts and your storage system, you're gonna be in a lot better shape. Now, those will not help you, uh, well, it'll help on both counts, on both latency and, and on throughput. So what we do uh, with the Zangati is we do collect information on all of these things, on the, the storage IOPS that we're seeing, uh, the latency. You know, for me, a good rule of thumb, you know, how you feel about latency, Don? Oh, I've got a definite opinion on latency, 10 milliseconds. I don't like to see any latencies larger than 10 milliseconds. I start to get concerned. If I see a, a one-second latency, okay, there's, there's going to be storms brewing. There's going to be resource contention storms hitting. You know, there's some turbulent seas out there. So I like 10 milliseconds or less. And then, of course, um, uh, you, can, you can get higher throughput by trunking lines together, but you cannot. You cannot. If you take five one gigabit lines and you trunk them together, you will not get any faster latency or faster IOPS necessarily. Um, you will only get faster throughput. So... That's a little bit about the storage system. Um, you definitely need to have insight into what's going on there. And so what we do is we look at two places. Here's your stack, right? Your hypervisor has data stores. Data stores talk through a network, a SAN, right, to your storage system. And so what we do is we, we interrogate from the hypervisor itself. And remember, how do we get information from the hypervisor? We talk to its boss. Actually, we do more. We talk to the boss the vCenter or the System Center Virtual Machine Manager, we also talk directly to the hypervisor um, and gather information from that. And we get like the read and write throughput, the IOPS, the latency, you know, how many hypervisors are being served out of a certain, you know, data store, uh, number of the guest VMs that are being served and so forth. Now, if that all comes back green, then we're good. You don't need to know anything more. But if you're not happy with those numbers, you know, per my prior slide, and you start to get suspicious about, oh, gee, maybe I need to put a flashcard into my NetApp, um, we give other information. From, we, we talk to the storage system and go, hey, what's your side of the story? What are you seeing for your read and write IOPS? Right? And, and that number will, will almost always look just like it does at, at the data store. If it doesn't, where's the issue? It's in the network in between. Right? So uh, this is what's happening uh, at the actual storage system itself. And while we're there, we can interrogate other things about the storage system. One of the problems I had two weeks ago was a guy had a, um, uh, he had a, um, uh, a storage system that uh, was, uh, everything gr was grinding to a halt. He happened to have Zangadi in when this happened. But what happened was a disk had failed. And so the system was in a RAID 6 rebuild and performance had sagged by 25% during the rebuild. That's good stuff to know, right? Like, what is your sag for a RAID 5 rebuild, a RAID 6 rebuild, you know, and just kind of like,
balance your load based on that. So uh, we can look at other stuff like NFS shares and SIF shares and what's going on with iSCSI versus Fiverr channels, blah, 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 and go ahead right in and interrogate the, uh, the, uh, the storage system on that. So we give you two perspectives is the answer. And then, uh, oh, hang on, get my cursor in the correct place. All right, and here's the actual um, uh, dashboard I cut out of our product with the uh, deep support for the NetApp storage. And you can see I've got the storage server selected over here and, uh, you know, various information. It's per controller, right? Sometimes, sometimes it's either the I.O. bottleneck to the storage system, the controllers are gasping for oxygen, or the rotating media is too slow, you need to introduce some flash, either as a caching layer or, at, you know, go pure pure solid state storage. So that's what we show for storage, Doug. Perfect, I, got, I have a uh, couple questions from you. So um, nice. uh, here we go, here, here's one. Uh, where's the data stored, on the, uh, in the cloud or, uh, at, yeah, or at my own servers? Right, okay, good question. Um, the last thing you would want is for us to be storing all this data in our cloud because we know a lot about your environment, way too much. So what happens is Zangati is a virtual appliance. Um, it comes in a variety of sizes, um, depending on how big uh, or small your environment is. So it's just a, it, you just crank it up on ESXi and you're off to the races. So, so Zangati runs in your environment. Uh, you give us as, as little as, uh, you know, two uh, vCPUs and uh, a couple of gigabytes of memory we can get going. We like some RAM because we have an in-memory database. The cool thing about Zangati is as we're collecting information from all of those different sources, it's all being assembled in real time. So the picture gets clearer and clearer. Let me go back to sort of here, right? With each additional source of information that we get, um, the picture gets richer and richer. Now, we do that for a couple of hours, and then we take the older stuff and we push it off into a database. So you can do reports that run over long periods of time while still having real-time uh, uh, real analytics going on for you. Perfect. Um, what components of Cisco's UCS can Zangati help monitor, and how does it accomplish this? Yep. So we, uh, we've got a uh, uh, tech brief on this is the best way to uh, go at it. Um, but yeah, we, the UCS servers, we have the ability, we, you know, they, we have their APIs, you know, special APIs to talk to those, the NICs, you know, NICs that are virtualization aware. So we have uh, in our latest release, XSR 12, which was introduced in December-ish timeframe, maybe November-ish, uh, we put in the support for the Cisco UCS and FlexPod and all of that. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, so I have a trouble user, a bad guy. He's having some troubles, or he's not the bad guy, but he's experiencing some bad things. How do I track down an issue that's reported by a user? Okay, yeah, you know that's an interesting one because you know you look you look at a you look at a dashboard like this, um, which a lot of products give you, and you're like, hey, Sam's on the line. He's ready to kill me. Um, he's beside himself. I've never heard him so angry. Uh, and yet, you know, it doesn't look that bad to me. I'm, I'm hitting a 95 here. That's still A range. You know, what's, what's your issue, Sam? Well, you know, Sam might be having, what if he's having uh, latencies, you know, uh, five second latencies. Every time he interacts with his mobile device, it takes five whole seconds before the thing comes back and then he can do the next thing and wait five seconds. That would aggravate anyone. So, what we do is we go in and we grab a recording of the entire IT environment. Um, and we do this when either uh, an end user can initiate us to grab a recording or uh, it can be a, um, uh, a threshold that is crossed um, that, that initiates the recording. And uh, a recording has every metric with second by second granularity of the entire IT infrastructure. And we can actually see, because you get, you get information from ZenApp and, and, and from, and from vCenter and from System Center Virtual Machine Manager, where you, know, you can see some of these end-to-end -end latencies and timings of what's going on. So with a powerful recording, having captured the event, 
we can go in and actually, uh, in this case, uh, I'll show you a view a little bit later, we can go in by user and, uh, and uh, actually see what's going on. It, um, so, oh, wait a minute, let me crank it up right here. Hang on one sec. Let me get, uh, let me get my uh, virtual app dashboard up right here, and I'll show you what I mean. I might say, hey, I want to see the profile. I think this will work. I want to see the profile of my app users. So here they all are, see? So I've got 39 app users, and some of these are being profiled right now because I just cranked it up. But um, you know, you can see we're going in here, and we're actually able to see. Um, I know right now that this is a Citrix user because it's uh, it's uh, HDX. If it was uh, VMware Horizon uh, with View, then it would be, of course, PC over IP, PC OIP, right? So. This way, we can get a good view of what's going on from the end user's perspective, actually. And uh, one more thing I want to say on that is um, that, you know, this is like a DVR recording. You can take, you know, you can take the, um, uh, let, me get a, let me get a recording. Hang on one second. I'm going to go back to the product. I think I'm going, oh, oh. Okay. So if I get a, um, a recording, okay, I don't have one there. Let me get some alerts. Each alert comes with a recording. Oh, there we go, great. So every time a threshold was crossed, an alert was generated, and every alert has a recording. I'm just going to double click on one at random here. And then what comes up is uh, the recording that was captured exactly when that threshold was crossed. And it'll take just a second. I'm on a slow network today. It'll just take a second to paint in. Come on, come on, I'm busy, I'm on a webinar, paint, paint. And I'm getting a, uh, you know, high CPU usage warning here. Sometimes oh, the... Oh, okay, I'll come back to that point later, I'll show you the recording in a little bit. But that that's how you can see through the eyes of the end user, is you need to be collecting that information all along. Now, if if, if a threshold wasn't crossed, then an end user could go in, and if they just click on a URL, they can use this piece of our product called the visual trouble ticket where they feel, oh, who are you, blah, blah, blah. When they hit send, you know, create visual trouble ticket, then the recording will be attached to this trouble ticket so it can be tracked and very quickly resolved. And the thing about these recordings is they are so powerful that um, if your best troubleshooter can find anything in a couple of days, when you give them one of these recordings, hey, there's an issue, uh, Joe. Um, you know, here's the recording. He'll find it in 10 minutes. He will know exactly and precisely what's going on. This is the type of optics that the industry has not previously had because the other solutions that are out there, they're looking every five minutes or they're looking every 15 minutes. I mean, you can imagine if, you, if you're driving down the highway, you open your eyes for one second. Okay, you saw that, and now you close them, and then you wait 10 minutes, and then you open your eyes again for one second and close them and wait 10 minutes. You're going to miss a lot. And the thing about Zangadi is we don't miss anything. We're second-by-second second granularity, and we're the only solution out there that does that. So when you're trying to track down a user issue and it was a five-second latency that was the issue, you can't capture that with a tool that has a 10-minute granularity or a 15-minute granularity. No way. No way. You need Zangadi to catch that sort of stuff. So that is it for visual trouble tickets. Perfect. Um, alarm storms. So uh, how do I d uh, get to the root cause of uh, alarm storms? Okay. So I've got, I've got a, uh, a graphic up right here um, uh, showing an alarm storm. And that's the thing is that alarms, they don't come just one at a time, right? They come in a flurry because in the case that I mentioned earlier, you know, a, a, a storage system went into a RAID rebuild, performance sagged by 25%. I've got uh, two dozen hypervisor hosts relying on that storage system. Maybe not all the LUNs sagged by 25%, but some of them did, um, LUNs or shares. Um, and so now I've got hypervisors complaining. Those hypervisors are running guest uh, VMs, uh, and those start complaining. If it's VDI, you get users starting to complain, you know, or virtual apps. So you get this cascading... Uh, you know, you, you get these walls of, of, of alarms. And uh, you, what you need to know is you need to know, well, what should I be paying attention to? Um, can you just tell me the one that's here? I see 16 of them. Can you tell me the one I need to actually act on? 
And the, fir the, fir the first most important thing about alarms is uh, that uh, thresholds should be dynamic so you don't get false alarms. But um, these, the, and we do have dynamic thresholds. So these are all actual real alarms that happened. And now I want to go in and find some way to say, okay, what was the root cause of what's going on? Well, you know, humans aren't really up for it. The environment is too complex for humans to figure something like that out. So we have created a tool uh, within Zangadi, which is called our Storm Tracker. And the Storm Tracker, let's start it right here, uh, it, first thing it gives you is a heat map. And the way you read this heat map is, you know, um, the grayer the circle is, the more there's a storm going on there, right? And so you can go in, you know, if I say detail, I can say, okay, here's all the different guest VMs that are running on this host, which is in a cluster. And uh, some of them are fine, but some of them are not. You can, you can see, you know, uh, okay, here's a CPU contention storm over here and, and you know, another one there. Um, so the question becomes, you know, how do I resolve the storm? What is the root cause of it all? And so what you can do is you can go over here and you can uh, do our storm analysis. Um, just go right in and you can generate reports on these storms. So let's take this first storm right here. And I've prepared a few a few different uh, 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 analyses here. Um, this was a CPU contention storm that happened on that hypervisor, right? Warning, storm analysis for non is an ongoing storm. This isn't past history. This is happening right as we speak. And so here's all the VMs that were affected. And you're like, yeah, that makes sense. But here's, here's something interesting. All of these are outside of the virtual app dashboard. They also are affected. I know you only cared about maybe something that was on your, you know, some sort of virtual application that you're running, but others were also affected. And so what we've got here is a, a storm analysis report. Now, the next thing you can do, or let me show you another one here just as an example. I've got a storm that was a, a while ago, uh, and these VMs were all affected. This happens to be one of these uh, data store contention storms. So you can see you've got the IOPS here. Um, uh, you know, some VMs have significantly higher IOPS than others, blah, blah, blah. Great. Well, what, what can I do to resolve this? I'm glad, I'm glad that the tool fished through everything it was looking at and everything that was running and said, look, there's a storm brewing. And, and the nice thing about these storms, by the way, is we're tracking those storms from when they first occur. Uh, and they're, you don't even need to do anything about them. They're just a minor annoyance. It's just a sun shower. It's going to blow over um, to when they're getting bigger and nastier and you need to actually do something about it. So if you have to do something about it, we create a recommendation. So we've got a report here on this data contention storm that says the data store is experiencing high latencies. Even See, just what I was saying earlier, um, always suspect storage. Um, uh, the, data, the data store is experiencing high latencies, even though it was ample. Uh, even though it has ample capacity, it doesn't seem to be able to deliver the IOPS. And to alleviate these problems, here's what you got to do. Either upgrade the data store, i.e., throw a flashcard into your storage system, or and turn on the caching software, or uh, upgrade the network uh, to reduce the, uh, the congestion issue. So we've not only gone and, and found the source of the storm, but we've also helped uh, to remediate it. Perfect. So, uh, so, so we found them. Uh, how can we avoid them? Right. And this is, I started touching on this. Uh, so I thought so. Yeah, let me go back to my slides here and, and show you that. So it's sort of like uh, the storms, you can see them growing over time. And maybe the best way to show this is just go back to here for a second. See, I think I have a slide on the subject. Uh, yeah, right here, OK? So what Storm Tracker is doing is we're doing real-time uh, analytics, as I mentioned. You know, it's all in memory. It's as data is coming in, we're crunching it. And we're looking to see, you know, the, the, uh, how ferocious these storms are. And then what we do is we actually project out into the future. And uh, we say, hey, look, if you don't change anything in your infrastructure, this is what your future is going to look like. You're going to have these contention storms that are cropping up. However, 
if you take the recommendation and you make some changes, and for instance, this particular recommendation says, uh, you know, upgrade the physical CPUs or migrate one or more virtual machines um, because you know it's a CPU, uh, it's a CPU capacity uh, type of a storm. So if you take the steps, the remediation steps that we uh, prescribe, then future storms can be averted altogether. And there's only one thing better than root cause analysis, and that's no alarm storm. And so Storm Tracker lets you see through all of that and give you really good optics and visibility. Perfect, perfect. Guys, if you have any questions, please use the uh, questions piece to go to webinar and, and I'll uh, ask Don them. So uh, let's do this one. How can I understand the impact of uh, applications uh, to uh, BI performance? Okay. So... On this one, um, what I've done is I've run a um, an application performance report. Now, when you're when when it's when when you're just sort of generally looking at the health of your IT infrastructure, a good way to go is with these top N reports, right? Give me the top users of CPU. Give me the top users of memory on the hypervisor hosts in general or on a particular host. Uh, give me the the overall, you know, the the top users of network bandwidth or of storage IOPS, things like that. So what I did was I did create one of those reports here. It's an apps summary report, um, and you can decide what you want to go into it. Um, but it shows the top users of of each of the resources that you have uh, uh, in your in your data center. Perfect. Um, what about dynamic thresholds? Oh yeah, dynamic thresholds. I need to say some more about that. All right. So the thing with dynamic thresholds is, you know, if you had a hundred thousand metrics that were being, uh, you know, uh, that were all being um, tracked through your virtual infrastructure, um, it can be very difficult if you needed to adjust all of those metrics manually. Now the thing is that. Um, let me get the metrics up here, right? So let's do this. I'll do a dashboard. I'll do the performance dashboard, right? So these are all these metrics are being collected. They're being collected, as I mentioned, with second-by-second second granularity, and it's information about the applications, the users of those applications, uh, the hosts that are actually delivering them, right? The, the data stores, we've already looked at that, um, and so forth. So uh, you know, there's, there's, there's lots and lots of metrics. And the thing is that a, a value that might be fine today, um, you know, on, what are we, on Wednesday, um, mid-morning, a particular value might be a fine value. Um, but that same value tends to peak every Thursday between 3 and 5. And so what our tool, the, the first time that value peaks, we, we will cause a false alarm. We'll be like, hey, that's out of line. But after we watch the environment for a while, and it doesn't take long for us, we learn very, very quickly. We actually start learning in the first hour, and we pretty much know what's going on. Um, you get into day two and day three, we're totally solid. We're not one of these tools that has to wait six weeks to do the analysis and the learning of your environment. Um, we learn right away. A couple of days, you've got it. And so, the, and so once we learn your environment, then uh, maybe we wouldn't throw that alarm. Maybe we're like, hey, I'd normally throw an alarm on this situation, this latency or whatever I'm looking at, CPU utilization, but I'm not going to throw it because it's Thursday between 3 and 5. And that value, I don't know what, you know, whatever they're doing on Thursday from 3 to 5, that value would be fine for them. So that's the importance of dynamic thresholds. And, 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 and if you're collecting data on a second-by-second -second basis, this is especially important um, because any one of those data points could be out of line, right? And so you need to have dynamic thresholds, or you'll just be driving yourself crazy setting and moving all of the thresholds manually. It, it become a completely unusable tool. That's one of those tools that demos well and then doesn't use well. You have to have dynamic thresholds these days. I agree. Well, guys out there um, listening, uh, watching, I guess, uh, if you have any questions, please ask them. Uh, Don, that's all the questions I had. So is there anything else you want to show us? Uh, and then, of course, guys, please ask some uh, questions, and let's see uh, what, what Don has for us.
Okay, yeah, we know that. Um, so you know, I can give you a general sort of overview of the of the uh, you know of the lay of the land. As I mentioned early on in the uh, conversation, you know, all of the different. This is our this is our virtual app dashboard. We've got one for VDI, one for virtual apps, one for VI, one for just networks. But you know, this one's a pretty big one because it's virtual apps, so it includes a lot of stuff. So I like to demo this one. And, and you can see you can see all of the different objects that are being uh, that are being monitored here. Um, dropping down, you can get individual performance, but maybe I don't care about the top applications by the proc delay. Um, uh, maybe I want to look at instead. I want to replace that with um, you know by uh, app instant count, for instance. Right, so we've got three instances of this and blah, blah, blah. And the other thing you can do with these is you can go in and if you want to move that over to the right, you can kind of move it over. So you can, you, you've got this grid and you can determine what's in each of the squares of the Hollywood squares. Um, and depending on you know, what, what, what you're monitoring, you could get some different choices. Like for hosts, I'm looking here at top hosts by network bit rate. And here they are, and top in and out right there. But maybe that's not what I care about is network bit rate. What I'm a big fan of data store IOPS. And so now I've got the biggest user, the, the top hosts in terms of their data store IOPS. Right? So depending on where your suspicions lie, and the thing is, maybe you have no suspicions. If you have no suspicions, you can drill away and you'll find very little with these very informative DVR like dashboards. And but you know what? Just crank up Storm Tracker. You don't need suspicions. We're suspicious. We'll find everything. We will correlate with our re real-time analytics and we will find issues for you. But this is essentially what's going on with just sort of the, the top end uh, part of it. Um, I showed you the um, already the, the recordings that we capture. Um, you can go in uh, for a particular recording and um, you can actually uh, get a, uh, a replay on that. I've got one loading up right now. Um, and what I'm saying here is that we can show you not only what's going on with your hypervisor, but we can reach right into the guest VMs. That's something that I covered on the first slide. And, and this is um, loading replay. Yeah, okay, well, you know, load. Okay, my system is running kind of slow, so that might, that might take a while to, uh, to complete that. Um, let me do a close on that. So that's just a couple of other additional things about the product, um, uh, sort of the look and feel of it. Now I'm going to go back to my slides. And I'm just going to sort of um, summarize now. This is about where we wanted to be um, time-wise. Let me get into a summary mode and say that you know we're we're happy to give you an individualized uh, presentation, a deeper presentation on the Zingati. Um, you might have particular problems that you're experiencing that you feel like you need the optics on. You want to have more visibility on it. Uh, we have a free trial version of the product. Heck, we'll even uh, go ahead and download the free trial. We'll have we'll get you on the line with our uh, uh, systems engineer. Um, he'll help you get it all installed and wired up so it's talking to your infrastructure, and just let it run for a week. And uh, afterwards, uh, what we like to do is we get back in touch with that potential customer. We go through what the product found. So you've actually got our our experts uh, driving, which is good. And then you know. Uh, many times people like what they see and they factor Zangati into the purchase of, you know, the new stuff they need uh, to keep their data center uh, running well. So we're generating the reports for planning and communicating, you know, planning your, your next IT purchases. Um, most products generate reports. That is not unique to us. It's just one of the things we do. Um, but this ability to um, see with second-by-second second granularity and predict these future resource contention storms, uh, that is, uh, you know, that, that, that's worth its weight in gold. And then the recordings that allow you to take what, you, know, you could be chasing an issue for, for two days. Um, maybe the tools you have don't have second by second granularity. In fact, they don't. Um, and so you might not ever find those problems. So the concept of having a recording that could be uh, instigated by an end user or by a threshold getting crossed, and that recording being able to be emailed around through the IT department, and then someone goes, I'll take this one. Boom, they go into the recording, get to the correct point in time. I never showed you that. Uh, let me show you that everything is a everything is a recording in Zangati, right? So here, this one's come back, and I'm looking at you know information 
uh, on that particular uh, view client. And I'm just moving backward and forward in time. But even if I were like in our dashboard, our overall dashboard like this, you know, everything's a DVR. You grab this, you move it back and forth. So the ability to move through time and then uh, when you get to the interesting point in time to drill down, you know, really, really helps to, uh, uh, you know, resolve issues quickly. And uh, the dynamic threshold, keep, keep a lot of manual effort out of the picture. Um, and uh, all we do all of this with end-to-end, um, uh, -end, where end-to-end -end includes the client devices, smartphones, tablets, and such. Um, and, and no agents are ever needed with Zingati. So it actually, that's one of the reasons why it goes in fast. It's good. It's a nice tool for doing a quick IT assessment. See where you're at and determine uh, where you want to go next with your environment. Perfect, Don. I do have one more question for you, and that is, you know, you've talked a bit about this, this being easy to get in, uh, you know, installed and in, in, in running and what have you. But can you can you give us a, a more detailed explanation of, you know, I download the product, then what? How do I get to the point of what, you know, what what you've demoed today? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So the first thing you do, okay, so you download the OVF, you get that up on your, you know, your vSphere probably. You get that cranked up, and then you um, you log into it. And uh, of course, you know, like any appliance, first thing you do is, is you give it a TCP/IP address, set up uh, you know the super user's password, and then and then the question becomes, how are we going to talk to the rest of your IT infrastructure? And so it's really all about just you know getting your credentials together um, for uh, the various uh, hypervisor hosts and uh, and switches and so forth. Um, because, you know, obviously you're not going to get detailed information from an object in your data center unless you've got the rights to get it. And that's what I was saying earlier is all of this data will be collected within your data center, stays in your data center, um, and, and so then it's, and, and, and then you're, you're off to the races. Now, at any time, you can uh, have people come in and use the dashboard that are not in the data center. They could really be anywhere in the world um, and give uh, on a user-by-user -user basis. You can determine how much they see or don't see. And also, I should mention, there's, a, there's other dashboards that I haven't shown, like the NOC dashboard that looks across all of your worldwide sites um, and the executive dashboard. And uh, one of my favorites, the My Dashboard, that lets you put all the things that you personally care about that are your job to watch, um, you know, put them all on one dashboard. So this way people can kind of, you know, getting it set up, it really doesn't take long. Usually within an hour or two, uh, you're off to the races, we're collecting data, life is good. And uh, the rest of the time is spent exploring the product and all of the insights that it can be given you. Perfect, Don. Thank you so much. Um, I don't. If if there's any other questions from the audience, please um, please ask them now. If not, then we're pretty much uh, completed with this thing. Anything else you want to uh, share or, or talk about, uh, Don? I'm just I'm just seeing one in the chat that you didn't tee up for me, which uh, 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 somebody asked if these slides would be available afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. All the attendees will uh, will get the recording in the slides. You bet that, and and we will also. Uh, uh, post the recorded version also. Awesome. We are recording it. Don, thank you so okay. much. I really enjoyed this. You do a great job. So this is very, very interesting technology and, and uh, I learned a lot today too. I love it. Love it. So on that note, we'll go ahead and call it an episode. So uh, a webinar. Thank you so much, Don, and I'll give you the last word. Thank you, Douglas, and thank you for everyone tuning in. I hope you also found it useful. That was my intention, and uh, we're here uh, ready to continue the conversation if you have interest. Perfect. We have a hand up, and I don't know what that means. Is somebody asking a question? What does a hand up mean? I don't know. Don't know, but but rest assured that um, anything that was typed into chat, we're going to get, and we'll make sure that that all the questions were answered. Yeah, yeah, I can't find that. That's weird. Huh. Oh well. Okay, guys, thank you so much. And and like he said, if there's anything uh, 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 we left out, we'll you know we missed, we'll get back to you. And, and uh, if they want to get a hold of you, how how do they do? Well, just Zangotti.com is the best way, right? Absolutely. Perfect. Okay, guys, thank you so much for attending. I'll let you get on with your day and, and get ready for your, well, for me, my two o'clock appointment, right?
<laughs> All right. Have a good one. Thank you, everybody.